Hi Stampers, this is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations and as promised, I'm here today with the kite card that I showed you last week. Um, this card has this special little fold of a kite on the front and then it opens up as a regular card. I made myself really extensive notes because it's a little confusing the first time. I mean, if you do a few of them, it gets a little bit easier, but I know that I try to keep things as simple as I can for you guys because people look at these like fancy fold cards and go, oh my gosh, that's so complicated. I couldn't possibly do that. And it's not really as hard as it seems. So today we're gonna play around with this one and I have made a PDF. Some of you that are my current customers, I've already um, sent you that in an email. I'll put it in my newsletter. Um, it will be out there. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are down at my desk, and this is the card we're going to be working on. Like I said, this is the PDF. It's going to be in my newsletter. And then I have all the little pieces here. And so I'm starting with a card base, or kind of a card base. It, this is 4 inches by 11 inches, and this is going to be the base of the kite. The kite. Then I have a regular card base that is 8.5 by 5.5, scored at 4 and a quarter. So that's going to be under that. I have a piece of embossed cardstock that's going to go on top. This is 4 inches by 5 and a quarter. For the inside of the kite, I have three and a half by five. I'm actually gonna go do two for this one so I can put it on the top and bottom because I am gonna have this one close with mini magnets. The last one I did was closed with Velcro dots, but I wanna show you how to use the mini magnets because they're really lightweight, super strong, and I love them. And I will give you a link to that on Amazon. Okay, now we have our little pieces for the the kite decoration. And this is where it kind of gets a little confusing because the way the kite goes together, these little pieces have to angle a certain direction. And so we're gonna take these rectangles and we're gonna cut them in half, but you'll notice how when I do that, they're not gonna lay out the right way because it has a direction and a pattern on the paper. Now, if you're using something that's the same on both sides, then you can get away with just one per card. But if it's a dual side, like say you're using, for this layer you're using foil or something that's not gonna be the same on the back, then you're gonna want two pieces. So this is gonna be the bottom of the kite. So you need one that's one and three quarter by three and a half. You need two of the designer series paper that is one and a half by three and one quarter. Then for the top of the kite, we're gonna go with one and three quarter by one and a half. And then two of them that are one and a half by one and one quarter. Now, when we go to cut those, like I said, I, we want them to go in a certain direction. So when I cut this one, I'm gonna go from the top right to the bottom left. This one, top left to the bottom right. And that's gonna be on the, the PDF. Now, it, because this is designer series paper, I often say that we want to make sure that we were starting in the middle. And we can do that with the cardstock too, but basically we're going to put each point on the track in our trimmer. But if you take the blade and you start at the bottom and you slide up into it, there's the chance you're gonna smash that corner. And so what I tend to do is make sure that I've got it in my track, both points, then I'm gonna set the blade down in the middle. Then I'm gonna slide up and slide down. That keeps my points really nice and sharp. So this is gonna be like I said, the bottom of our kite. Now for the designer series paper, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start with my blade in the middle, go up and go down. And you can see how they would need to go this way for the kite, but because of the pattern, it won't do that. So that's why the second one goes the other direction. So I'm gonna put this in my track the opposite way, 
And now this is gonna do kind of the same thing. We're gonna get the two oddball pieces, but these oddball pieces will match with these oddball pieces. And so basically, you're gonna get the DSP for two kites. So just set those extra little pieces aside and you can make two. Now again with the with these and and we want to make sure these are one and a half by one and a quarter. Now we want to make sure that the one and a half is the part on the top because we want it to match with this. And so it's got to be the same width. We wouldn't want to cut it this way because then it won't match up. So when we're looking at them, I'm going to put the one and a half on top. And then I'm gonna cut from the top right to the bottom left, and the bottom left to the top right. You follow me? Again, start in the middle, up and down. Okay, so now when we lay this out for our decorative pieces, This way. Okay, it's going to go like this. So there's two, and here's two, and that means my other side will match up this way. Make sense? Okay, so now we need this part. Now this is the kite itself. And basically what we want to end up with is this because that's how it's going to fold together. So what I have here is four inches by 11 inches scored at five and a half. Now I've made a mark because this is four inches halfway is at two. Then I'm going to come down on the side one and three quarter. And I'll give you a link to the ruler too. I love this ruler because I can see through it. It's got marks at every eighth of an inch. Um, it's got the center point with the zero. So I'm gonna mark this here, and then I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side at one and three quarter. And then the reason it has the zero is because if you don't know what half of something is, you just make sure that it measures the same on either side. So I've got a two here and a two here, and that tells me the zero is gonna be the middle. Likewise, if we went this way, you know, I can slide it back and forth and I can say, look, if I put this on the three, that's only at two and a half, you know, we wanna move it around. And so that tells me that it's two and three quarter would be my halfway point. See what I mean? We went down one and three quarter and over two. Then I'm gonna find the, the bottom and that's gonna be at the two inches as well. But the girl I did this from, um, she measured and you know cut this way and cut this way and then cut this way and cut this way. You can do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna leave it closed. So two inches and then this is up three and three quarter. There we go. There we go. So the cutting was done with mine in two cuts instead of four. And it made sure that these even and match up. Now what I wanna do is I wanna score from that corner to this corner. So again, I'm gonna line this up in my track And score that way. Line it up again. And then score. Okay, so now we just want to make sure that these are good solid creases. So I'll bring in my bone folder, make sure they're all good and creased. Then I'm going to take these two top corners and push them down. 
So that gets me my kite. You follow? So I have this big X in the middle. I'm gonna fold it in half as normal. I'm gonna take these two points and push them down. And then because I had cut it with the card folded in half for these bottom pieces, this side is lining up a whole lot straighter for me than it did cutting them separately. Now, if you still see your pencil line, say you're losing a light, using a lighter cardstock or something, you can always come in with an eraser and just take those off. <clears throat> now we're ready to start decorating. So all we're gonna do is glue these down. Again, I'm gonna go to my handy dandy liquid glue because I want that wiggle room. And again, you gotta look at it and make sure that the way you're gonna lay them down that I'm gluing the right side. Apparently I laid them down a little funky so I've got a wider spot up. But that's okay because what I'm gonna do is cover this up with a circle. And you know, you could cover that up with a sentiment, another flower, you know, anything. And it will, um, kind of hide any imperfections. So don't get all panicked if the edges are not all exact because mine aren't and they should be, but they're not. And I'm not gonna stress over it. No stress in stamping, remember? Okay, now I wanna make sure that's gonna fit right there. So I wanna ink, or ink, I wanna glue this side. And again, I'm not laying them down exactly right. So my middle is really fouled up but it's not gonna matter. I'm gonna cover it up. We're good. So I'm gonna come back in with my DSP. But I promised I would show you guys how to do this, so I am, despite my being nervous. Just getting this middle, really ugly. We'll just cover that up. So let's come in with a two inch circle punch. And I used Gorgeous Grape, and then my layering was done in Highland Heather. So I'm going to come in with a two inch punch of Highland Heather, and watch that, it covers it right up. Then I'm going to take the small or the medium daisy punch. And I'm going to do two of these. I do two because what I'm going to do is have them overlap so that it looks like it's a little bit fuller of a flower rather than just like that. So I have two. I'm going to put them together in the middle with a glue dot. A lot of people try to pick these off of here. I never pick them off of there. I just take my flower, my embellishment, whatever it is that I wanted to put on there, and I just press it down to the glue dot and it picks it up. And then we'll just layer that on here. Then I'll get one more, put it onto our circle. And then I'm gonna take a faceted gem and put that in the middle. So there's our kite. Now the idea is I want it to hold closed. That's what I'm gonna use my mini magnets for. There are two of them here, I promise. They're just really thin, like I said. So there's two magnets. But I'm gonna need a piece of paper up here and a piece of paper down here because what I'm gonna do is hide the magnet in between. And I'll show you what I mean. In order to get this shape for the inside, this piece of paper was three and a half by five. And so I came in one and three quarter, made a mark, went down one and a half, made a mark, and then I just drew lines. Now again, you could do the same thing, just lay it in your cutter and cut away. But I wanted to be able to show you the lines I'm cutting on, just for the purposes of the video. So now we're gonna do the same thing with this one. So I'm just gonna make my little mark. I could have even put the two of them together and cut through both pieces of paper at once. That would have been the smart way to do things. 
because with this bigger blade it will cut through, easily cut through two pieces of paper. So now we have our two inside pieces that are going to go inside of our kite. Now I could erase these and use that, but I'll just flip it over and we'll use that side here. And let's see. I want to make sure that my magnet's going to go in right here. Oh, the case I have my gems in, <laughs> these are those gum packets. If you're at the grocery store, there's, I don't know, I think it's extra gum. It comes in these giant plastic pouches. And so <laughs> I was feeding out gum to like every kid in the neighborhood. It was pretty funny because I wanted lots of these little cases. And then I used my labeler and I have faceted gems. And then there's the rhinestones and the colored rhinestones and the pearls. I have one for every kind of little gem so that I can keep them in these little containers. But that's just a gum container. The Q-tips come in those too for um, traveling. Okay, now for this one, I'm putting the glue dot on the back of my second magnet. I'm going to set my magnet down with the glue dot up. Then when I close and press really hard, the glue dot's going to stick there. And so that's how I made sure that the two of them will match up. Then I'm just going to come in and glue this down over the top of it. It's going to need a little bit of extra glue down here. So there we go. I'm just going to give this a little extra hold here. And I don't know if you heard that, but it does a little click. And that's going to hold it closed. Isn't that cool? And those are little teeny tiny, really lightweight magnets, but they've got a great closure to them. So you can either use the Velcro dots or you can use these little magnets. Okay, for the string on the kite, I'm gonna bring in some Baker's twine. And then for the little bow, this is actually um, pineapple punch gross grain ribbon, but I think it's close enough that they're not going to notice it's not exactly the same color. And this is a little bow maker my husband made for me, and I'm going to try to get him to make some so we can have them out for sale. I do have a couple of them now, but I'm going to have more. Um, so if you're interested in this little bow maker, just let me know. Um, but basically, I'm going to take a piece and I'm going to wrap it around. And then I'm going to take the, the bottom one and fold over and through. And then I'm just going to make a knot. And the reason that there are the various little pieces is so that you can move them over and make bigger bows. I wanted a really little tiny one for this. So that's why they're, um, they were as close together as they get. But now I just kind of muck with it a little and it's ready to glue on. And then I have my embossed layer, four inches by five and a quarter. I'm putting lots of adhesive on it because of the texture to it. I want to give it some extra oomph. I'll just give it a little rub where the adhesive is on the back. Make sure it's good and stuck. Okay, so this down now. Let's, let's actually use tear and tape. I'm giving this lots of adhesive, more than I normally would, mostly because it's going to get interaction. So we want it to have good, strong adhesive. I should be using my take your pick tool. This has this little point at the end, makes it super easy to just get under there and pick that up. And then I wanted this string to look a little bit, you know, whimsical. And so I wanted it to kind of flow a little. And to do that, what I did is I stuck down a glue dot. I'm 
Okay, and it looks like I might need one more right there. I've got a little bit of a lift. And what I'm doing with the point is I'm just bringing the glue dot into the string because the glue dots are round and our string is narrower than the glue dot. So I just kind of move it in so that the string hides it. And then I need my little bow. I'm trying to just make the loops the size I want them. And two, I normally have separate scissors that I cut ribbon with versus what I cut paper with because they do wear the scissors differently. And so I have my ribbon scissors and my paper scissors normally. Now, another thing somebody had said is they had put a gift card in the front. I thought that'd be really cute. Um, but all we're left to do now is the inside. And so I, I don't get too carried away doing the inside, but I do give it a little something to make it match the outside. Now I could do that by either putting a strip of the designer series paper down the side, which I did have, or I can stamp because I've got the daisy over here. So sorry about that. Should have had that out ahead of time. Let's see, I've got Island Heather. And this is just the coordinating stamp set Daisy Lane that goes with our punches. Um, let's go, it's your time to shine and smile. And so I'm just lining these up on my grid paper so I can make sure that I think they're good and straight and they're um, following a line. And then I just come in with my block and pick them up. Gorgeous grape. And there we go. There's today's card. So I hope you liked your today's card and you found it easy to follow along with. Um, I promise it's not that hard. Despite my nervousness on camera, <laughs> it is not that hard. It is a fun card to make and I'm sure that whoever receives it on the other end is going to absolutely love it. And the fact that you made it with your own hands is just that much better. If you need any of the materials that were used in the making of today's card, I would appreciate it if you do purchase those through my store. I will now go in and make all the links and put them at the top of this post for the Facebook Live, and I'll also have a post on my blog soon. Again, I hope you like it, and I hope you come back next Monday and stamp with me again. Thanks a lot. Bye.